Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We're going to be talking about how do you build augmented reality solutions from scratch. My name is Dane Laughlin. I'm an innovation engineer for Invista, and I'm joined today by Alyssa Whittington, who's one of our XR specialists. The key focus of our presentation today is how do we develop without having a team of developers? So I think to start, we want to talk a little bit about Invista's background. Uh, Invista may be different than the business that you work in, but I think we probably have some similar challenges that we're trying to tackle. So Invista was acquired by Cook Industries in 2004. We focus on Nylon 66 applications uh, for engineering plastics. And we also have some specialty chemical intermediates and process technologies uh, that we sell as well. Like I said, you guys may not be in the chemical industry, um, but I imagine that you probably have focuses on EHS compliance, you know, maintaining quality and optimizing you know, your employee resources. So a big piece of optimizing the employee resource part of this is talking about self-actualization. And for us within Coke, what that means is that it doesn't mean what you went to school for. It doesn't mean what, or it doesn't matter what your background is. Uh, it it kind of matters what your interest is and, and where you have passion. And so the story that we're telling today is about Alyssa and I, both of us don't have you know, traditional development backgrounds. Uh, my background's in biomedical engineering. Alyssa's background's in chemical engineering, and she was a process engineer. So uh, <laughs> neither of us went to school for computer science or focused on coding or anything like that. And so that's kind of the emphasis for this whole presentation is, you know, how do you get started? How do you develop, um, you know, projects and, and, you know, ensure value and then scale it from there? Thanks, Jane. So that's a um, great way to start this is, Neither of us are developers. And my introduction to XR came a couple of years ago when I took a course through CircuitStream and it was for augmented and virtual reality. And as this course was coming to an end, I was looking around the plant that I worked at in Delaware and thinking about what problems I could use this new technology and these new skills to help solve. So the plant I'm at is pretty small, um, strapped for people as a lot of manufacturing plants are. And one of the known challenges that we had was lockout tagout. So for those of you who aren't in manufacturing or refining, lockout tagout is something you do before you have maintenance work on a piece of equipment. So if you've got a pump that you need to do um, a preventative maintenance on, or you need to fix something in an electrical cabinet, you need to make sure that those are isolated so that you're not gonna get your fingers uh, crushed, you're not gonna get electrocuted, nothing's going to turn on while you're working on the equipment. So what you physically do is turn off the electrical disconnects, you close valves to airlines, anything that um, isolates you from the system, then you apply a physical lock to it with a key um, to make sure that you're safe while you do work. And obviously this is a huge importance for environment, you know, health and safety. You wanna make sure that this work is done well. Um, so that scares a lot of people to away from doing it. And the plant that I'm at and that I've seen other plants have problems with is that they rely on one or two people that are highly trained to do lockouts around the entire site. And that leads you with, leaves you with a lot of overtime on those people. It leads to operators not having a great understanding of how to isolate their equipment. And um, it, it leads to quality uh, issues as well. So you're going to have downtime while you're waiting for someone to lock out equipment. You're going to have more product to waste. And these are all things we wanted to avoid. So what I thought I was, you know, I could help solve was having more people comfortable with doing lockout. And to do that, we'd need to give them a solution that gives them the right instructions in the right place with a high confidence in that location um, for, to do the steps. So that was the problem that I wanted to solve. And thinking about the solution at a high level, initially we came up with a mobile AR Unity application with image tracking. Mobile because these operators need to move around the plant applying locks and taking locks off so it can't be on a desktop. And they also don't always have devoted desktops at the plant. AR because it would be an on the job tool, not VR. So um, because we don't wanna take them away from the machine to teach them. Unity application, because that's what the circuit stream course that I took was on, but also because it is a powerful tool that allows you to build for different platforms. So a few of our sites do um, use Android, but um, Unity can flip back and forth between iOS and Android um, easily. 
And then image tracking, the most important part about what this app will do is that the software will detect if you're in the right place to apply the lock or close the valve or whatever the step is and tell you you're in the right place, assure you, you can do this um, step by step. So when I say image recognition, here's an example of what I mean in a plant. A lot of plants have equipment that are bought in multiples and they also look very similar. So these are some electrical disconnects with buttons that you would have to use to lock out um, a finish pump on our system. So um, looking at them with the naked eye, you can definitely tell differences if you're looking closely, but if you're not paying a lot of attention, you could definitely put the lock in the wrong place, press the wrong stop button, shut down the machine, all of these um, bad processing issues. So what the image recognition does, the software, is marks out key points um, and can compare them to what you're seeing in the real world. Uh, so this is an example through Euphoria software. AR Foundation also does this. There are other image recognitions that um, can offer this. So it's better than the human eye. So with that, knowing that before I had the software that I needed or AR Foundation could do that with Unity, I started programming um, a little blindly, but creating one app for every piece of equipment. So if we had a certain, you know, a Finnish system that needed locked out, that was one app. If I had a draw machine that needed locked out, that was a different app. So I was coming up with dozens of apps um, created all by me by putting the, the images individually into Unity and making this app. So Dane, if you want to share that, you can see all the, the apps that I've made so far. And the way that it works is gives you a stagnant screen and tells you where to go. So it says, go to the conveyor nine. So you walk there. And then when you hit the done button, either lock or unlock, it goes to real time. So you can see in the background in a second that this is just the camera on an iPhone or an Android phone um, in real time. And it recognizes that disconnect and it gives you that arrow saying push to try or lock out the disconnect or apply a lock, whatever you need to do. Um, here are more examples of it at the plant giving you recognition um, pretty well on complicated areas. So it gives you that, that confidence. You're definitely in the right place to lock this equipment out so maintenance can work on it safely. So that worked, but I don't want to create you know, 10,000 apps of the same thing. Um, and put in all these pictures myself, and it's just not scalable. So the next thing I thought was what would help would be if people at sites could make this themselves. So I made a version of Unity that had an inspector portion on the right-hand side, and it would allow people to input the text that they wanted, input the arrows that they wanted, and the pictures. Um, this worked but it was definitely a little bit cumbersome to maneuver the arrows. People were gonna to have to be comfortable with Unity and opening a new program. Um, there were a lot of ways that this could fail if you're not comfortable with computers. So this was another step in the right direction, but it still left me creating some of the apps and still have one app for every single piece of equipment. What we wanted was one app for anything at the site that the site could make themselves easily not on a desktop, on a mobile application. Um, but it did, on our journey, get excitement about, you know, just showing people this image recognition got excitement enough for us to move forward and uh, permission for me to devote some more time to it. So as Alyssa said, you know, our goal was to create a scalable lockout tagout solution. So in order to do so, we had to get away from the desktop application that we had before, transition over to a mobile application, something like Snapchat. And for a lot of this, uh, like we actually took a page out of Snapchat's book. You know, you take a picture, you drop whatever content you want over the top of it, and then you share that with you know the next person. And so this creator application that you're seeing on the right hand side, I'm actually in the process of you know creating. A, uh, a lockout tagout. You'll see the Invista logo here shortly, uh, but this gives you an idea of how this works. Is you take a photo of whatever it is that you want to do a lockout on, you drop your arrow on top of it, you move it to the associated location, you hit save, and then uh, it allows you to kind of go to the next step and continue generating content. So the nice thing about this is that anybody who has a mobile device can use uh, the camera on their phone to create a lockout tagout 
uh, application. And it's a simple way for you know, people to get started without needing you know, developer skills or even a Unity license. And so the next step of this was we had to generate a secondary application it's the actual user application. And so uh, this did a couple things. One, it made it easy because it consolidated all those applications that you saw on Alyssa's you know, screen beforehand into one application. And so uh, it filters based on you know, what site you're on, uh, can filter based on team. And so this gave us some opportunities to you know, make it more efficient for you know, folks who are going to be using these applications to apply them. So what you'll see over here is in... Uh, in the previous video that you saw, I created a lockout tagout application with an arrow pointing at the Invista logo. What you'll see here is this is the user version. And so you're seeing the reflection of that content that was generated in the previous application. And so the nice thing about this is that you have the ability to uh, gather analytics on this as well. So you can understand you know, who checked off where, what was the behavior, you know, all these different things. Once we have this application built, our next focus was how do we expand the use of AR? Uh, we had demonstrated that there's a lot of value in using it for lockout tagout. And so you know, we needed kind of our next problem uh, statement in order to find a solution. So the problem that we had was you know, how do we connect data from many different sources across the business so that it's easily accessible in the field and it's contextualized in a way that you know, the person who's doing the work can understand what that data means. So the challenge that we have in that problem statement is that we have a ton of disparate systems with data all over the place. Um, and you know, how do we consolidate that and make it accessible for people who make you know, decisions out in the field every day? So the solution that we came up with was how do we use immersive technologies to harness the power of mobility and also contextualize information? And so one of the first groups that we worked with was a company called Matterport. They have a digital twin platform that allows you to easily scan your facility and add information over the top. So you'll see in this GIF on the right-hand side here uh, that we have a model of the facility. What's nice about this too is that you don't have to have engineering CAD drawings and all these other things. The, the model is actually generated from the camera. And so we did some LiDAR scanning uh, and you can see the, the export there on the right-hand side. And then if you hover over what's called a matter tag, you can see there's a link to an Oculus procedure uh, that you'll actually see here in a bit when we get to the AR application. But the way that we went about this process was we started by creating this digital twin using the Matterport process. We went to our end users and we said, what are the kind of core uh, capabilities that you guys need to be successful? And some of those sounded like, or some of those were SAP, uh, OSI Pi, uh, some of these other you know, integrations that we have. And then how do we create deep links that uh, allow you to access the, the content for that particular piece of equipment in a different system? And then obviously give access to the end user, gather feedback, and then you know virtuous cycle happens and you end up with a better product there. And so some of the feedback that we initially got was, uh, hey, we don't have access to desktop. And so we really need something where it has to be easy for me to pull out my, my phone and actually use this in the field. Uh, how do I find the, the correct piece of equipment? So imagine that you have you know, four or five pumps in a row and they all look very similar. How do I know that I'm putting in a work order for the correct pump? And then you know, there's error in comparison of you know, the screen to the real world. So, you know, Again, if we have a row of five or six different pumps, if I'm looking at a pump on a 3D model, uh, I could be lo looking at pump three and standing in front of pump five and get those mixed up. And so we needed a solution where you know, we could use a camera or a mobile device to make this you know, simple process for people. So as Dane said, this is still sort of a locational problem for us. We're not positive about the location we're in and if we're in the same part of the model as we think we are. So it, it kept the lockout work that we did very fresh on hand because that was a locational spatial problem as well. Um, and it, it was also the same challenge that we want this to be mobile. So the first thing that we wanted to do was just make an app that could take you to the same place in the Matterport browser as you were in the real world. And luckily the Euphoria software offers something called area targets. 
So initially we had image targets, which just took a picture and recognized if you were looking at the same thing as the picture. Area targets can take the whole 3D view of where you're at and it compares the panorama that the phone is seeing to um, the area target that it has on file. And happily to make these area targets, you need a model and that model is provided by Matterport. So from the Matterport model, we get an area target, we put it in the app, and then with some positional work, um, we can go from holding our phone up and having it recognize where you're at to taking you to that same place in the Matterport model. Go ahead. So it is looking down a hallway, it's got tracking, it knows where it's at, and you say go to Matterport, and it opens the browser in Matterport to the same position once you put in a password. And you can see all those matter tags sitting in that model there as well. So that was really the first step, was just taking Matterport and putting it in a form that was didn't require click, click, clicking around. So if you have an emergency in the plant, you want to get to the right place in the Matterport model quickly, you hold up your phone, it knows where you're at, it takes you there. Um, what we called this was the Matterport AR app, um, also known as Mara. So um, that's what we'll be going through, how we added to that. So the next thing that we looked at was bringing in the matter tags. So instead of having to go to the mobile browser and then clicking around to get to the matter tag, um, can we bring that into the AR space on our phone or tablet? And it turns out we can. So if you play the video on the left, you'll see that these objects, stars, blocks, whatever they are, um, they contain the matter tag links. So in this case, this is the Oculus headset procedure that Dane showed earlier, and you can tap on it on your phone and it will open that um, link. So you get the procedure exactly where it's at. So imagine instead of having these paper copies sitting next to a machine telling you what to do and you're not even sure that these are updated, um, they may be, you know, the pictures may be dark, hard to tell, um, you have that, that virtual version right in front of you, you can click on at any time. So the next thing that we were thinking about was navigation. And part of that is because in augmented reality Lotto, that, that first step that was stagnant and told you where to go, didn't really give you directions on how to get there, especially not from wherever you were starting. So given the fact that the um, app knows your position, knows the position of the matter tag, can it tell you where to walk to get there? Um, also turns out it can. So um, if you play on the right, you'll see that it gains tracking and we're looking around the area and we want to access uh, a matter tag and have it navigate us there. So we select the matter tag. And then we navigate. And the app is fairly robust in that it does not care that there are people walking in front of you, that the doors are swinging. Uh, it gives you a path similar to Google Maps, getting you from point A to point B, where um, it's all in your site, taking you to that matter tag. Um, so you can imagine how helpful this would be if you're new on site, or even if you don't remember where something's at. If you, you're looking for a pump and you're not positive where it's at, it will lead you there. It'll lead you between areas too. Um, so those two areas that were in that video are actually two different scans. So you can link them together, um, walk between areas smoothly. Um, you can also imagine if you don't remember where the AED is or, or the fire extinguisher or emergency egress, um, this app can take you to any of those places. It'll know where you're at and um, through AI, give you the shortest path. So after we looked at navigation, we were trying to figure out other features and asking other people their opinion. And one thing was, could instead of a matter tag, could we have an arrow pointing the direction of pipe flow? So instead of having a dot, we would have an arrow saying water is flowing this way or that way um, and tell us what's inside that pipe. So here on the left is an example of putting that arrow in augmented reality space, saying it's hydrochloric acid, and you place your phone on the pipe or you can point and shoot at the pipe. Um, 
and tapping the screen, we'll leave an arrow there. And then you can adjust it um, forward, backward, uh, turn it around in a circle to make sure that the pipe flow is aligned with the arrow. Pretty easily there. And then the next time that someone opens the app on the right, once they gain tracking, it has that arrow stored in augmented reality space. And because it knows where you're at, it puts that arrow in the same place. And you can tap on the arrow and it automatically brings up the SDS. So if imagine you have a chemical leak and you don't know what is leaking. In fact, you really don't wanna to have to uh, chase the pipe back to its source to figure out what's in it, whether it's hydrochloric acid or water. Um, if you point your phone at the pipe rack, uh, you can probably find out if anyone left arrows there. So the same method applies uh, for applying pipe overlays as it does for applying, applying dots that would give you information on sensors. So you can tap the screen, add a dot, link it to OSI Pi data that lives in the cloud. And so if you're a process engineer like I was, you're gonna hold up your phone, it knows where you're at, it sees the sensor, you click on it and it tells you this is you know, 300 gallons per minute or you know, 20 degrees Fahrenheit, and you don't have to call the console operator to ask what's going on. You get immediate feedback in the field and you can see the data as opposed to having to go back and forth between your desk and the plant. That's extremely valuable for troubleshooting. You can also add Matter tags from the app. So the app is talking to Matterport and it goes both ways. So, and you could add a Matter tag that then goes to Matterport that you see in the browser. This is really empowering operators, maintenance, technical, anyone to add information and to access information in the field uh, themselves without having to go through a developer. Awesome. So this is our, our final slide here. And this kind of encompasses the overall reason that we started down this, this AR path. So we wanted to deliver the right information to the right people in the right place in the right context. Uh, you know, Mara was developed for industrial facilities. So, you know, again, how do I get to a pump? How do I, you know, navigate to a lockout area? Um, but it addresses kind of an overall challenge that we have, which is, you know, localization within, you know, your 3D space. And so, you know, this expands to use cases outside of in, in like our industry as well. Um, so you can see this applied to warehouse inventory, you know, being able to navigate and make sure that you know where your inventory is, hospital navigation for either loved ones or doctors, um, you know, classrooms, um, you know, there's, there's a ton of different applications where it's important for us to be able to navigate and understand information, you know, within our world. And so we think this is kind of just the beginning of this type of technology. The other kind of point that we'd like to talk about is, you know, this didn't start with a team of developers. You know, it started with Alyssa and I who are passionate about this technology and we started tinkering around. Uh, we took a class, you know, with a, a development uh, group and, you know, kind of got started from there. So if there's anything that we want you to take, you know, from this is that, you know, if you're just getting started in the space or you're interested in the space, you can build some really cool stuff without being a, you know, computer scientist or, you know, a coder. Uh, you can get started with basic YouTube tutorials. You can get started with classes like we took with CircuitStream. Um, then there's lots of opportunities for growth in the space. With that said, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions.